How can a 43,000-year-old fossil from Europe be more closely related to classic Native Americans, people who would not exist for another 30,000 years, than to Africans? The population that Out of Africa claims is the ultimate source of all modern humans. This should be impossible under the classic narrative. If all non-Africans truly descend from a small, recent African founder group, then the earliest Eurasians should resemble Africans more than they resemble a much later branch that formed far away in Siberia. Yet the opposite is true. The earliest European genomes align with the ancestors of Native Americans and ancient North Eurasians, not with Africans. This means deep Eurasian lineages existed before the supposed African migration, revealing a complex web of ancient populations that the out-of-Africa model cannot explain. It forces a simple but devastating question. If Africa is the source, why are the oldest Europeans genetically tied to Native Americans instead? In 2026, the out-of-Africa theory has reached its breaking point, not because of ideology or politics or new fossils from some remote desert, but because of something far simpler and far more devastating, a 43,000-year-old human from Bulgaria. Individual F6620 of the Bacho Kiro cave was supposed to be just another early European Homo sapiens. Instead, his DNA detonated the foundational assumptions of the classical out-of-Africa model, or out-of-British-colonial-Africa model, to be more precise. Against all expectations and against every prediction, out-of-Africa proponents have made for decades this early European was genetically closer to Native Americans and to the ancient North Eurasians than he was to later Europeans and far closer to Native Americans than to any African population. This single finding contains within it a chain of implications so destructive to the traditional narrative that the field is still struggling to absorb the impact. It means that the first Homo sapiens of Europe belonged not to a European lineage, nor to an African-derived European subpopulation, but to a vast Eurasian expansion whose surviving descendants today are found primarily in East Asians, ancient North Eurasians and Native Americans. If out of Africa were correct in its classical form, such a genetic pattern should have been impossible. The logic is brutally simple. Out of Africa claims that all non-Africans descend from a small, isolated subset of Africans who exited the continent around 60,000 years ago. Under this model, early Europeans should form the earliest branch of non-African humanity, separating quickly into a European lineage distinct from East Asians, Siberians, and the ancestors of Native Americans. Africans, being the root population, should be equally or more related to any early Eurasian fossil compared to later populations that had yet to diverge. But Bacho Kiro F. 6620 breaks every one of those expectations. He shares more alleles with Native Americans, people who would not exist for another 30,000 years, than with populations in Africa. He is closer to ancient North Eurasians, who appear in Siberia some 20,000 years later, than to Europeans who lived 8,000 years after him. This is not merely a surprising result. It is one that cannot be reconciled with a single recent African exit, forming a simple tree of humanity radiating outward. To understand the scale of the problem, one must look at where F6620 fits in the global genetic landscape. He does not fall on the branch that leads to Kostenki 14, Sungir, or the Gravatians, the people who later become the ancestors of Europeans. Instead, he falls outside that cluster and instead aligns with the great Eastern Eurasian lineage associated with Tianyuan Man in China the proto-Native American founding population in Siberia, and eventually with the ancient North Eurasians individuals such as Maltarboy. In other words, Europe's first modern humans were not the ancestors of Europeans at all. They were members of an early, sweeping Eurasian expansion that stretched from the Balkans through Central Asia, into Siberia, and ultimately into the Americas. Their closest living relatives are Native Americans, not equatorial Africans, because Africans never belonged to this lineage to begin with. This fact alone shatters the classical narrative, because it reveals a deep Eurasian genetic structure that existed before the supposed out-of-Africa bottleneck.
If multiple Eurasian populations were already diverging, drifting, and intermixing in ways traceable through genomes such as Bachokiro, Tianyuan Man, Ustishim Man, and Oase One, then the human story cannot begin with a clean, recent African pulse that populates the rest of the globe. The moment early European DNA shows stronger ties to Native Americans than to Africans, the logical implication is unmistakable. Eurasian population structure predates and is genetically independent from the traditional African root model. It means that the genetic ancestors of Native Americans, ancient North Eurasians and East Asians were already becoming distinct long before Africans diverged from them in the ways required by the Out of Africa narrative. The world that produced F6620 was a world where Homo sapiens existed across vast stretches of Eurasia, not a world where small bands dribbled out of Africa into an empty continent. A male from the Bacho Kiro population carrying Basal Y haplogroup F, like the Bacho Kiro man, would have embodied the original pan-Eurasian human prototype that existed before Europeans, East Asians, or Native Americans became genetically distinct. He would have stood around the same height as modern Europeans, lean but strongly muscled from constant mobility through forests and mountains. His skin tone would have been a medium to copper-brown, darker than modern Europeans but lighter than equatorial Africans, reflecting the ancestral pigmentation state shared by early Eurasians. This flies in the face of reconstructions of the Bacho Kiros Lati Kunranis population, as released by the European Union funded Max Planck Institute, that portray them as recent equatorial African migrants. His hair would almost certainly have been black or very dark brown, straight or slightly wavy and thick, while his eyes were deep dark brown, the universal human eye colour before the later evolution of light hues. His facial structure would not resemble modern European or East Asian patterns, but a more ancient form, a medium broad face, straight nose, slightly pronounced brow ridges, a high forehead, strong jaw, and large deep-set eyes. His overall look would resemble a blend of early Siberians, some Native American groups, peoples who still carry echoes of the same deep Eurasian ancestry. What makes this even more devastating for out of Africa is that Bacho Kiro predates the appearance of the European genetic signature. The Europeans of 30,000 to 40,000 years ago, like Kostenki 14, form a unique lineage that is not present in Bacho Kiro. This means Europe experienced a population replacement early in its history, not from Africa, but from another Eurasian group. Individuals like Bachokiro F6, 620, were part of a broad initial Upper Paleolithic expansion that swept across Eurasia. That expansion produced East Asians, Siberians, ancient North Eurasians, and ultimately Native Americans. It did not contribute to the ancestry of most modern Europeans. So, Europe was first settled by a population genetically tied to the ancestors of Native Americans, a population that later disappeared from Europe entirely. This makes no sense in an out-of-Africa world, but makes perfect sense in a world where Eurasia has long been inhabited by multiple diverging Homo sapiens lineages. To grasp how radical this is, imagine reversing the situation. Imagine if a 43,000-year-old fossil from China turned out to be genetically closest to the Khoisan today, or if the earliest Siberians were closer to Yoruba than to East Asians. Every paleoanthropologist would immediately conclude that Africa had once been settled by a massive Eurasian expansion. Yet, when the exact inverse scenario unfolds, when the earliest Europeans turn out to be closest to Native Americans, the field hesitates to question out of Africa. But the implications are identical. If a European fossil predating the European lineage is already closer to Native Americans than to Africans, then the African-Eurasian split cannot reflect a clean, simple origin in Africa, followed by a one-way dispersal. Deep Eurasian populations existed. They expanded. They differentiated. They moved into Africa. They moved out again. They vanished and reappeared. The human story is braided, not branching, and Africa is not the exclusive cradle from which all later humanity emerged. The relationship between Bacho Kiro and ancient North Eurasians exposes another fatal flaw in the African model,
the idea that African populations represent the deepest human branches. In reality, ancient North Eurasians, Bacho Kiro, Tianyuan, and numerous early Eurasian fossils represent lineages that possess divergences older and more complex than the simple African slash non African split assumed by classical out of Africa theory. Africans do not sit at the root of the human tree, with the rest of humanity radiating outward. Instead, Africans contain mixtures of ancient Eurasian backflows, ghost archaic admixture, and recent expansions that entered Africa repeatedly. This explains why populations like the Mbuti and Khoisan no longer fit the out-of-Africa model. Their extreme divergence is not a relic of African isolation, but instead the result of ancient introgressions and deep population structure, the same kind of structure seen in Eurasia. When Bacho Kiro F6620 is genetically closer to Native Americans than Africans, it is because Native Americans and Eastern Eurasians descend from an early expansion that Africans were never part of. The Bacho Kiro results point toward a radically different picture an early pan-Eurasian population of Homo sapiens spreading along the belt from the Balkans to China, giving rise to the earliest East Asians, the ancestors of Native Americans, and the powerful ancient North Eurasian lineage. Africa, rather than being the launching point, becomes one of several regions receiving inflows of hominin populations. This is why the ancestral North African lineage itself shows strong affinities to Eurasian populations, because it is the product of bidirectional movements, not the untouched root of the human family tree. As the genetic map of Eurasia fills in, it becomes clear that the earliest Homo sapiens expansions were not African replacements of archaic populations, but broad, interlinked networks of human groups already spanning continents. And this brings us back to the central question. The question that anyone reading the Bacho Kiro paper inevitably asks, how can a 43,000-year-old fossil from Europe be more closely related to Native Americans than Africans? The answer is as simple as it is revolutionary, because the ancestors of Native Americans were already in Eurasia long before the African model says they should exist, because Eurasia was not empty before modern humans because the earliest Eurasian Homo sapiens did not come from a single, clean African pulse, and because Africa was not the isolated cradle of humanity, but part of a vast intercontinental web of population movements. Bacho Kiro F6620 was not an anomaly. He was a survivor of an early Eurasian world whose descendants would one day populate the mountains of Tibet, the forests of Siberia, and the ice-bound coasts of the Americas. Out of Africa has collapsed not because of ideology, but because a Bulgarian fossil turned out to be more Native American than Equatorial African. In that one moment, the tidy, linear story of a single African exodus dissolved, replaced by a human saga that is older, stranger, more chaotic, and far more interconnected than the textbooks ever imagined. Thanks for watching.